Sound of Music live stream watch party with Time Out New York and the Rogers and Hammerstein organization. I am joined for this conversation. I'm Adam Feldman from Time Out New York, and I am joined in this conversation by four of the stars of the 2003 NBC broadcast, The Sound of Music Live. And won't you please identify yourselves and the parts that you played in this movie for, uh, for anyone watching? Hi, I'm Sophia and Crusoe, and I played Brigitte. Uh, I'm Ariane Reinhardt, and I played Liesel. I'm Michael Campano, I played Rolf. I'm Christian Borrell, and I played Max. Well, welcome all of you. It's good to have you here. I want to I want to go back in time for a minute to uh, to 2013, and uh, I know it's a, it's a <laughs> astonishing. Same. You know, Please, we're traveling back go. in time together to 2013, and uh, I want I guess we can start with how did you guys get involved in this uh, project to begin with, uh, especially for the the, the the younger actors at the time was there a big search for these roles yeah i think the search was pretty wide i remember um seeing uh an announcement posted online that there was going to be a live version of the sound of music and i grew up watching the film and uh, i was just so excited and i thought wow i could maybe i could be in this uh so i actually reached out to my representation and i said hey can you see about getting me an audition so i I sent, I was doing a show out of town, so I sent a tape in, and then next thing I know, I'm at the callbacks with all these other kids, and they're putting families together, and then I'm sitting next to Ariane. <laughs> and we should mention, <laughs> you're, you're a lifer, you know, you've been in this for, for a while, right, Sophia? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, my, <laughs> my whole life, like, you know, some people have been doing this for 30 years, you know, but I also just, it's kind of only been my life, so. <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> Sophia has been more employed than all of us combined, <laughs> like since the Sound of Music Live. What you've done, you've done a Broadway, TV, film. Did you do London? Did you do something in London as well? Yeah, I did. Um, I did the musical in London. Yeah. So. Yeah, Sophia, I literally remember you. I remember sitting down and talking with you and your mom, and you were just so dedicated and passionate. And I was like, this girl is gonna, she's gonna take off. And it's, it's amazing to already see that what you've done in this little time. Oh, thank you. Well, you guys all too. I mean, I've, I've been following all of you. We've all stayed in touch pretty well. And I remember I saw Ariane do a little, um, like a little uh, in concert underground thing. It was really fun. Uh, it was a while back. But, and now, Ariane, I, I, if I remember correctly, you had done The Sound of Music somewhere before. Is that right? Or am I mixing that up? Yeah, I grew up, I actually, um, I have a, like a drawing of it on my wall i was gonna be like oh look i'm in front of my piano but michael you're showing me up with your actual real piano and i just have my apartment <laughs> keyboard <laughs> um yeah i grew up in st louis so i grew up doing theater um we have a lot of great um professional summer stock theater so i grew up doing uh the muni and i did the sound of music there as well as um at another theater called stage of st louis but at the muni uh it's a huge outdoor theater Eleven thousand people are seated uh per night so it's it's like a crazy scale, and I always thought that was going to be my my biggest scale of doing a show, and then we really topped it with by a few million. So a few million, yeah, yeah, by a lot yeah. of million. I think it's it's worth pointing out here that that was an unbelievable success. The yeah. original broadcast, I think, even more. I don't know. I, I guess I can ask you guys. I mean, were you surprised because? The original numbers, I remember when they came in, were just staggering to everyone involved. Like eight, People, eighteen original, I think eighteen million originally, and then like twenty-one after the re-airing or something. And like the DVRs and things like that, yeah, and then yeah. I, and also just various people tuning in and out. I think that by some estimates, as almost forty million people saw at least part of it over the course yeah. of that that first broadcast, which is just in these days uh, is just a staggering number. Yeah. I mean, were you guys, did you guys know that you were sitting on this, this mammoth pit? That's what, I remember that being the most interesting part about the whole journey getting there, because even when I was auditioning for it, I wasn't sure what live meant. Same. Yet, and I wasn't I sure had no if we were going to. I what I had booked. Yeah. I had no I, idea. <laughs> we just knew we were in it together. But yeah, I, I didn't know if we were going to be like on stage and there was going to be an audience or anything. That that part wasn't very clear to me until we started rehearsals and everything. So I just knew this big thing was coming. Didn't even know what exactly. But the mystery was really fun. And 
It was really interesting. I mean, it made it, it made it so interesting auditioning for it as well, because it, you knew you weren't auditioning for like a typical musical, but obviously like we just went with the musical theater way. Well, and on, on that note, and like the audition process, my, ours was a little, it was separate from Sophia and well, Christian, I don't know, you're like a Broadway star. So they were like, here, sir, come join our production. Um, but we, Michael and I were in like Liesl Rolf callbacks for a month and a half. And that last day we were there because they did the family meetups, but we were there in the morning doing 16 going on 17 from like 10 a.m. I remember we like convinced the documentary people to give us snacks because we were like, we've been here forever. <laughs> it was forever. Um, and then we, I remember going home afterwards and I, I, I was in school, so I was in my dorm and my agents called. I'd like just stripped everything off and they were like, you got it. And I was like, amazing. So what is this? Is this is like the PBS thing where you have like a concept. Like, what, what's happening? And they're like, why don't you know what you're going to be a part of? Well, Christian, how did you become involved with this? Because one of the things that was striking about it when it aired is that they had, you know, you had Carrie Underwood in the lead and she had never done this kind of thing before. And then she was surrounded by a lot of people who I mean, not just you, but also Laura Benanti and Audra McDonald and people like Christine Nielsen, you know, like just people who uh, who were very uh, familiar uh, and experienced faces. Uh, I don't mean their faces were experienced. I mean, they, they were familiar faces and they had a lot of experience. Oh, man, how uh, dare <laughs> It's seven years later, even. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you become involved in this, Christian? I mean... Well, I was fortunate enough to have been involved with Smash, um, and Bob Greenblatt was instrumental in making that happen. And so when NBC just made this foray into this new form, I think they wanted um, people who were comfortable with doing live theater. The stakes were so high, we did not know the numbers would be that high, but we knew that it was going to, we were, a lot of us were going to have to tamp down our adrenaline and just drive <laughs> through it. So I think he wanted experience, he wanted wrinkles. He wanted, um, <laughs> no, and so it was one of those lucky moments in life that uh, I was asked by sweet Bob Greenblatt, and I, of course I was happy to join the adventure. Well, and you had, um, and as Max, I, it's a part that one of the interesting things about the difference, there's so many differences between the play and the uh, movie versions, and uh, I think a lot of people who, who have seen the movie very often and, and haven't had a chance to see it in the theater may have been surprised by some of those differences. And a lot of those differences are, do involve uh, Max and, uh, and the Baroness, you know, uh, so, you know, like you have two songs that are not in the movie. <laughs> I imagine that's when 30,000 people stayed and then 10 million people decided they were like, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. Well, that's, um, I watched the, the I, have, I have a VPN to watch Japanese television, and I got to use it to, uh, to watch uh, the UK stream of it, and it was, like, funny to see people chime in, and they're like, this is not right, like, this is not where um, my favorite things goes, and I'm like, well, actually, mm -hmm. it is where it went in the, because everyone doesn't have access to the stage production, and the movie is so wonderful and so loved, it definitely, uh, it's a shock if the if the movie is the only version you've seen. Yeah, right. I love those songs. I love that they stayed true to it. I think so many people were curious. One of the reasons I think the number was so high is people were curious to see how a musical was going to work live on television, what they were going to do, whether there was going to be an audience. And I actually like that in future productions they added audiences. I, one of the most bizarre disconnects of this thing. We worked so hard. And when you're in a rehearsal room and you get to the end of a song, you're used to no applause. But we were doing this thing and all of a sudden you'd reach the end of a number and then it would just be silence. And then we'd cut to commercial. And what I really liked about what they started to do um, with Superstar and beyond was add that audience so you could feel that energy. It's one of the most important parts of theater. Um, so that I, was to I totally agree, but this was their first. This was their first one, right? This was their first. Yeah. Uh, when we forget that, and I, I remember there, uh, and I was part. Of, we, I, I watched it live at the time, and there was a lot of commentary at the time on on Twitter, and some of it was quite critical. But I think people were forgetting, including me, that uh, this was something that hadn't been done on TV for a long time, and they were still finding their their legs a lot of ways. Yeah. And if I may be blunt, I'm sorry, Sophia. Go ahead. Oh no, go yeah, ahead. Sophia, go. 
Um, I, I was kind of, if I may be blunt, shocked at so much of the criticism from theater people because it's like, I understand that we're kind of like stumbling a little bit here and there and that this might not be perfect, but this could be a thing. Like, don't you want to be a part of this thing as it moves forward and gets better? Or do you want to just crap all over it? Because you got two mm -hmm. choices. And we all have opinions about everything. To me, it's one of like the main reason that I'm not a big fan of social media is that like those type of opinions are great when you're sitting with your friends on the couch and you turn to but someone. But do not put um, those online. <laughs> those Keep like, them to yourself. Please, please. But anyway, and I, I, you put yourself out there like that. I had a blast doing it. Sophia, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, I think that all of those, I think that people were just like waiting for us to screw something up or waiting for somebody to trip and fall or do something because it was just so cool and people are interested in what they're already familiar with. And I think that a lot of people are just kind of waiting for something to mess up to prove that this shouldn't be done. Or, you know, it was just too cool for people, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think probably yeah. some of the, to the extent that people came in uh, gunning for it, and I think some people did, uh, that may have had something to do with the fact that Carrie uh, was playing the lead in it and was not considered a theater person, you know, uh, and wasn't a theater person. And, and uh, there's, there's, so, there's a way in which, she was instrumental to the fact of the project to begin with and to the success that it had with viewers. But at the same time, she was also uh, an, an easy object of criticism yes. for, for people who were uh, looking to, to, to snipe at something. And I'm not yeah, saying that, that they, yeah. I, I'm not blaming those people. I, I did a fair amount of sniping, if I recall correctly, myself. Uh, but I, but I, I, it's hard I mean, to remember. And here we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. I described it to a lot of people. And still, it's so funny what people feel really comfortable saying to your face. Um, like, I feel like pe people were poised with their hands over the keyboard, ready to be like, she's not Julie Andrews. This isn't the movie. And it's like, no, like nobody is Julie Andrews. And I think it was really smart of NBC and Bob and um, and, and Neil and, and Craig um, to pick the, the stage production to be like, this is the whole point is that we're giving every boat we're about to see with Hamilton on Disney Plus, you are given live theater that otherwise you would have to pay hundreds of dollars to see. And Carrie is bringing in these this whole other group of people who aren't going to see it. And also she is so talented and like the nicest human being. Yeah. So it was so people were people were nasty both online and like to me they're like, well, these are all the things I hated about it. I was like, what a crazy thing to say to me right now. Yeah. Were, were you guys, I mean, during the program, were you guys tracking it when you were, when you were off screen? Were you uh, tracking any of the reaction in real time? There's no time for that. Oh, no, no way. No. <laughs> That's a, I had time for that. I mean, I had some time for that, but I didn't do it. I turned my, I turned my phone off and it, it, the, the cool thing about not having an audience though was it really drew me in the world. Like Arian and I were on this forest. And it truly, it was a soundstage, but it really felt like we were alone in a forest. And it added so many elements for me that I don't get on theater because my biggest thing in theater is I, I posture too much and I'm worried about the audience. And this just like allowed me to really like fall into this thing. And it's so crazy because the music comes out of the air. So it feels like a real live musical. You know what I mean? Like if you were in a musical moment, like music would just start right now. And I was like, hey, how are you? You know, it's just so oh, crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, right. It, it, it was, it was, so the no audience in a way was really beautiful in terms of, of just like finding those moments. But yes, then the number would end and there was so much adrenaline and, and, and then it was just kind of like, and they were like, camera next? shifted. We're not even <laughs> looking at you anymore. We're worried yeah, about the other half but, of the sound, dude. That night was so, it, we were, I, I remember being so cool and collected until right before we started when they brought all the producers in and everybody that worked on the show and they gave us this, Bob, who was so great the whole time, he was always there and always present, gave us this amazing talk about how important what we're about to do is. And then I was like, oh, it's time, it's time, it's time to go. <laughs> well, it's so I funny it. to hear you say that about the, uh, the, pot, the, the self-consciousness, because I was thinking about the technical demands of delivering a live performance while also hitting your marks for a, a television performance. That seems like, for me, that would make oh, me so boy. much more self-conscious. Well, the the day before, I I've told other people I have not told this like I guess publicly that uh, the day before 
we did a full dress rehearsal and we taped it in case like the satellites crashed and we needed something. Oh, as we saw from Rent, like you need, a, you, need a, you need a recorded dress rehearsal. So we did it and um, camera blocking throughout the whole thing was, oh, not my fave thing. Camera blocking already is tedious. You're just like standing there. People are adjusting things. Basically they're like actors, stop being actors and just like let us get the lighting and the cameras right. But this was like, crazy because there were so many cameras and it needed to be so precise and this so we was, did this dress it was like regular, Sorry, it was like regular theater tech times a hundred uh, <laughs> it was it was crazy town and we did this dress rehearsal the day before and as michael said we were in like a forest there were all these trees and so we kept we like got through the scene and the song and then part of it in dance they were like cut there was a tree in front of Ariam's face at the beginning of the scene and they were i was like okay so we did it again and we got like again to the same part cut we got a tree in front of michael's face we did that i think four times and then they did it again and i just like burst into tears and i i was like i don't know what's happening i thought like you have the adrenaline you're like i was ready for my quick change after that i was supposed to sprint to the other side of the sound stage and i was like i don't know what's happening anymore what else <laughs> Yeah, I remember so, that. I remember oh my that, God. that just I remember I, I messed up my I messed up a line or I forgot a line and I just stood there and I think I just started laughing. It I was yeah. like almost I feel like everything had to get out for that one, but like I remember Laura Benny I will always remember how lovely Laura is. Um always but at that time Laura was like it's okay we're just gonna like take a break and she like brought me into our little dressing cubicle she was like can we get some snacks maybe some apple juice like blood sugar's a little low right now and she was like it's okay everything's fine and then we like went back and did it but it was all that to say it was uh there were challenges to the well, so camera when side you, of things. When you, when you talk about that process and, and you're who's making those calls I mean you had two directors right um mm. and the technical aspects and one on the sort of rehearsal aspects or, or were they both equally involved if you remember i would say equally i was i was more in contact with rob most of my time was spent with rob i would say um you know that would that i spent most of my time with him so i got to know him very well yeah, he ran the more traditional like the my favorite part which is the rehearsal we had about was it five weeks maybe downtown and four in four, four weeks in the yeah. Valley studio and, and you guys it, recorded in New York, right? We did, out mm -hmm. at uh, Grumman yeah. Studios. Beth Page, was, Long Island. Yeah. But we were downtown rehearsing like we were doing like a regular musical with the floor taped out and everything, and that felt like theater. And then, of course, the excitement of moving to Beth Page and seeing this aircraft carrier hangar or whatever they built there prior. <laughs> and that's really when Beth took over and started to, uh, to focus us on the technical aspects of things. But they worked so well together. They both maintain their senses of humor and it was a lot of laughter the whole time except for the tears but then apple juice tears in. well and then then my uh my dresser had apple juice for me when i was like crawling under the window to uh after the quick change to go into um uh um <laughs> the thunderstorm scene i was like there and she had a little bottle of water and a little water bottle of apple juice so it does cure most things <laughs> i know this well, let's talk about uh, Carrie Underwood a little bit, uh, and and about working with her. Um, I I watched it again um, recently, and I I feel like you can see her even over the course of the two hours and fifteen minutes or whatever it is. I feel like you can see her uh, getting more relaxed in the performance, um, and. Uh, and that's sort of a fun thing to watch. It's like one of those montages in a movie where they, you know, there's a there's a bad audition, and you know, you can see it you know, by the end. It's 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 it, she gets her strength. You know, um, it's it's not quite that dramatic, but it's it's it's, <laughs> interest, it's it's interesting to watch. You know, the second time, and and be a little bit. More, I mean, how was she to work with on set? She was at that point. I mean, she still is. She was a huge pop music star. Um, what I mean, did, how, what was her attitude towards doing this with you guys? She was, she was totally she was, brave in game. Go ahead, Sophia. Yeah, she was, I, I was always a big fan of her growing up, and I always listened to her. My dad bought me her CDs growing up, so I already was a huge fan of Carrie. And then when I met her, I was like, whoa, how can this amazingly talented superstar be so nice? Like, she was just 
the nicest person and is and she sets an example for everyone and and especially you know she like you said she hadn't done theater she hadn't really done that side of it but she always just as like you know as like a lead in the show it's part of your job is to set an example for the rest of the people and sort of lead the way and even though Carrie hadn't done a lot of theater she did that and she held the torch and she and you know those those shoes are big shoes to fill um for that role and I think that she she really just knocked it out of the park no matter what people thought I, I still to this day I'm just like in awe of her talent and how much she put into it and when I think back on it like I have chills right now just thinking about how hard I watched her work and and how amazing she was um so yeah that was my experience with Carrie and when I think back on it she's just like one of my favorite my favorite parts because because working with her it was like you know my childhood dream I was like I can die a happy girl um <laughs> So yeah, and so then she went on to do Broadway, The West End, and many other productions. <laughs> well, it's also it's a it's it's it, it, it's such a brave thing of Carrie Underwood to do uh, to to go on, it, into this incredibly exposed situation um, and to risk so much of herself doing it. And uh, I mean, it's not like Maria is a part that you can kind of phone in. She's in almost every scene of the. I mean, yeah. she's, it's an overwhelmingly big part by musical theater standards. She's an almost, I mean, I, may, how many scenes are there that she's not in? There's like the Rolf I think and, three. and the Liesl scene. And... That's when she used the bathroom, basically. The three <laughs> scenes she wasn't in was they were like, clear a path. Here's your, here's your opportunity. I mean, so even just on, on that basis, it's, uh, it's very impressive. Yeah. Well, she did not have to do this. It's not like she was famous 25 years ago and was looking for a way to get back into show business. <laughs> She was like, she, you know, she's never dipped. She's a, a superstar. And she was so down to earth. I, I, I just was so impressed with her. Yeah, me as well. She was so accessible. She, it, it was just, it was amazing. So dedicated, so focused. And, and I still remember that first time we all did our sing through, read sing through. And it was just like the principal sitting around in a circle, just in, in fold out chairs in a studio. And she opened her voice and it, you knew it was going to be something special. And nostalgia is so powerful, right? And that's why people are like holding it so, but, but we weren't trying to remake it and she wasn't trying to remake it. And that's the beautiful thing about theater is, is that every actor is gonna be different in their own way because they're gonna bring, bring themselves and their experiences. Like when I did Wicked, people would come up to me and be like, you, you did this part wrong. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. I'm gonna, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I have that apologized the... for that, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I went on Twitter and I made an apology. No, I'm just, it's just, that is the beautiful thing about theater is that it is subjective and, and every actor is gonna bring something different. You'd want it to, that's what makes it alive. And I just, I, same with Christian, I was, so, I was so impressed with her just, just the whole time. She was, she was a pro and her, she was great. Debate, I, anybody can find me on Twitter and debate me about that. I, I think she was so good in that part. I agree. And not to be that person in a Zoom or a Skype call that says the same thing that everybody else says, but we all still have to listen. But I, she's like the nicest person. And I say that all the time because everyone always asks, how is Carrie? And I'm like, she's like sunshine in a human being. She worked so hard. She was there from like beginning of rehearsal to the end. I'll never forget when she hosted the CMAs and like the only time she was ever gone, came back on a red eye and came into rehearsal, never said she was tired, never complained about anything. Unfortunately, we had scheduled the, the thunderstorm scene then, so she had to jump on a bed with us. I was like, couldn't you have given her adult scenes when she's exhausted? Um, she's like yeah. the nicest, uh, and I loved her performance. I thought it brought like um, a really lovely, like the naivety of Maria, the like being in a world that she's not used to being in. I think she brought that in such a beautiful way and her voice is, uh, killer. Who is it? Oh, Harry. Mine? <laughs> her, her ears were burning and she, she gave it a call no but that's an interesting that's an interesting point because uh, everyone's always talking about what a what a flippity gibbet um, maria is uh and 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 julie andrews uh is very composed ultimately you know in in that performance and it's that she's very assured uh she's very julie andrewsy and it works like gangbusters in the movie but it's a different take on on maria you don't get that 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 uh, insecurity no, feeling sure. in the same way. And, yeah. and it's written that way too in the movie. You know, she comes in and right away she's holding her well, they, ground they with I the captain in the movie. You know, yeah. yeah. I think that's something um, that also made Carrie's interpretation really unique is that, and, and, and it worked really well because I think that 
uh, she, you know, her specialty is sort of country music, and country music comes from folk music, and folk music is about telling stories. And if you listen to Carrie's music, her, her lyrics are never wishy-washy. They always have a point, they always have a meaning, they always have a story. And if you watch her perform them, like in her concerts, if you watch videos of that, the way that she tells a story with her voice is, I think, also made her, made her a great fit for doing a musical. Whereas if you took some other pop star who has their own lyrics written for them and they just go out there and, you know, sing their face off, that's different than a person who's telling lyrics. If you listen to her lyrics, they're full of soul. And a lot of her songs even have a lot of, you know, Christian meaning and things like that. And I think that um, her, the, uh, the storytelling that comes through in her voice and the way that she performs and the way she grew up performing in the church, um, I think really, really makes her a good storyteller and is also why she was a good fit for the role. Yeah, I agree. And I think that there's something, you know, um, you get a sense of, for me, you get a sense of Maria as a person of faith in this version that you don't get as strongly in other versions that I've seen, like as a, as a real believer. And that is an important part of the character. I mean, she, she, she was a nut, you know, uh, so. Uh, her and Audra, of her like with tears down her face as Audra singing Climb Every Mountain is, I, I, we like all were just watching it on the monitors and it's, that's definitely one that I will never forget. Uh, have you guys, uh, is there, have you guys all watched the movie since, um, we're gonna wrap this up soon, um, but I, I wanna know if you've watched it and, uh, and if so, cause not everyone likes to watch this, but I wonder if you look at it and you look at your own performances and you say, there's a moment where that I like that I did. <laughs> um, Can you identify like a particular moment that because I, I, you know, I, just to give people something to watch for some little moment that you appreciate in your own performance. Go. <laughs> uh, I watched it. I watched it after. I've only watched it once through, and that was. I watched it after and I, I think I stopped in the middle and I was like, I, I can't, I just, I can't watch myself. And I, you know, it, it was very close to when it had already aired and I was just like, I guess I'll watch it with my family. So I went to watch it and I was like, it, it just like, it brought back a lot of the, the stress that was going on. So the whole time I felt almost like I felt when I was performing, I was like, ah, here comes this moment, here comes this moment. So that's what I think whenever I watch it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that, when I when I think back on it and and things that I do like somebody put in my tag photos the other day this video of the kids doing the little in do re mi where we do this little like thing and you could just see us all making eye contact and and the Von Trapp kids is a group we it felt like a team and as being like a young person in front of 40 million viewers like I don't I don't know that we individually would have been able to handle that unless we weren't like a little team and we had such a great bond so I think that that's what I would look for. You can really see the bond between the different actors, especially the kids. Others? <laughs> uh, I know this is a brutal question, but I'm just genuinely curious. Like I want to, I want to, I want to keep an eye out. I watched, I watched it recently. I watched the, the re-airing or the re-YouTubing. Um, and which I think I'd like watched the clip the 16 going, our 16 going on 17 scene, uh, sort of like through my fingers. Um, but it was easier now six, seven, six and a half years later. Um, and I, I mean, I think that is at least so different from the movie. That's another one where people are like, it's not in the gazebo. And I'm like, no, it's not in the gazebo. And I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I, I love, I love what we did with that. I like went into it personally a little more sarcastic a little like it's not quite so literal I think in the movie it's like very doe-eyed and very like yes I do love you Nazi Rolf and I'll follow you <laughs> to the ends of the world um but sorry Michael uh but I think ours is a little more like a little more tongue-in-cheek a little more um self-aware but still with that same energy of like hormones and I'm very you know that that buzz in the air yeah yeah i mean slim pickings for me over here but but <laughs> catch, catch it while you can um but it it's it's it, like sophia said it's, it's definitely overwhelming to watch because just that time was so special and crazy and all the things it was just it's it's still overwhelming for me to watch but i agree with Ariane. i think that sticking going on something is very very special and um 
I think it's just because I rem like we we put so much work into it, and we literally did that. That was the dance for the audition. Everything we did and the and Macy parade the week yeah, before. Oh. Yeah, it's um, it, yeah, and it's it's a single scene, right? So like it's just it's a lot of pressure, you know. I uh, but yeah, even, I'm overwhelmed even talking about it. Did I say anything? Did I just black out? Did I actually answer? I don't even know. It's just like <laughs> it's just, anytime I think back to it, I just. Uh, yeah, it's 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 been such. A, I really like the trend. Uh, my favorite thing in the show is when the transition they do when the wall opens up and she walks um, out of the church, Mary? right? Yeah, it's stunning. Yeah. I, I I think it was one. I think it definitely was one of the best live musicals done because it was just simplistic and we had a proscenium and it was definitely filmed almost like a, a soap opera, but it was just it was easy to follow and it was a story and it was just it was it's yeah. That's it. That's it. Nice. Christian, over to you. Um, I haven't watched it since it originally came out. I enjoyed watching it. Um, I, it the nice thing about it is it's like um, our version of a photo album, because now we can look mm -hmm. back and just remember rehearsing it. Um, working with Laura Benanti was such a joy. Um, we were connected at the hip and made each other laugh the whole time. And so a lot of my appreciation of it at the time was that it captured a dynamic amongst all of us. Um, but there was one moment that I was a little proud of, and it was stolen, as all my best moments are. <laughs> um, this one was from Rowan Atkinson. I had the sheet of paper at the end, and I was buying time because they were fleeing, and I had, like, the announcement to make. And I, in rehearsals, I made people laugh by doing it, flipping it over, and then doing it one too many times. And I got hot, sweaty palms thinking live. Am I, am I going to do it? Am I going to, like, <laughs> Lily here on live television? Like, <laughs> I have total control over the situation. And so I pulled a Rowan Atkinson, and, and I'm proud of it. Uh, Kristen, <laughs> you're you're one of the reasons why I'm glad we didn't have an audience, be, uh, because you and Laura were so funny. But I, I'm, in everything, the first person to break. Like, uh, Michael and I did a workshop of a show that had, I br every time I'm, like, figuring out how do I put my hand over my face, like, I am not chill. I am not chill in a situation. Um, and you guys were so funny so i'm really glad that we didn't have an audience because i finally got to a point where you guys could say things and i could keep a straight face That's and if funny. we had introduced even one laughing audience member it would have been out the window that's sweet laura's a genius she's one of the best things in the entire thing i think yeah well i think we're uh, we'll we'll wrap this up with with on that note and i think we're, we're going to go over to laura from this uh so that's a nice way to transition over to Laura. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us for this conversation. And uh, I hope you uh, will join us in watching it tonight. Or if you feel like it, you know, <laughs> chime in and say something uh, during the broadcast. Uh, but uh, great to see you all. And, uh, and thank you all for, for, for your work and for being here. Uh, so Laura, thank you so much for joining us here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. We uh, talked to some of your co-stars a little earlier. Mm -hmm. I have grown a little bit of beard hair since then. I grow that very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. Same. I'm Italian, so. <laughs> uh, but they did. We did have a little transition because they were saying nice things uh, about you. Oh. Um, but I, I guess I'll ask you some of the same questions that I asked them, and we'll mm -hmm. see what uh, what you uh, what your perspective was on it. Uh, how did you become involved in this project to begin with? Um, they they just asked me if I would do it. Bob Greenblatt sent me a beautiful email um, explaining why he felt I should take this role. And I would do anything for Bob. And Sound of Music is a big part of my life. It was my first job ever on Broadway. I was the understudy for Maria. And then I ended up taking over the role when I was 19. And I played Maria opposite Richard Chamberlain. <laughs> on Broadway. So that was like, that was my, um, that was my big break. So Sound of Music is really special to me. And I was excited to, to get to play this different part. And this part is really kind of a, a wonderful opportunity. It's very different from Maria, obviously. It's a, it, it's a, but in the movie, at least, I feel like there's a, there, there's a large contingent of people who are kind of rooting for the, <laughs> for the Baroness. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, part of that is her performance, but I, but your performance also in this live version had a lot of people feeling the same way, kind of uh, uh, just sort of wondering why the 
the captain doesn't see what's right before his I mean, eyes. what's wrong with them, really? <laughs> no, I, I, I wanted it to be that way. I didn't want it to be a foregone conclusion. Look, everybody knows the story of The Sound of Music, but what's the point of reviving something if you're not going to make it interesting? So, you know, I like the idea that she was, like, you know, smart and funny and um, that they seemed to have actually a really lovely relationship. Um, they just, you know, didn't see eye to eye necessarily where it where it mattered. Well, yeah, and part of what's interesting about the writing is that uh, she isn't a cartoon villainess. Oh, no, no, not at all. I just think she's, the way I would try to play her is like, <clears throat> she's just not good with children. <laughs> you know, she just wants to like, look at the mountains and sip champagne. And all of these children are just sort of like, for someone else to take care of. <laughs> well, I, I, one thing that I was struck by, I mean, I was talking to all of them and they, um, they were so uh, enthusiastic about uh, working with Carrie, um, yeah. about her uh, her work ethic, her uh, her kindness and positivity on the set. And I wonder, I mean, what your experience was. You didn't you didn't have that many scenes together. Uh, no, we didn't. But no, I had the same experience. You know, she was such a hard worker. She was such a positive, kind person. Um, I was so impressed with her, you know, and it's it's a really daunting thing to take on something brand new in front of millions and millions of people. And the fact that she brought musical theater into the homes of like 43 million people or whatever it is who, who've watched it at this point, I think is such a, a wonderful thing. You and brought she, music back into this house. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> So I just, I can't say enough good things about her. I think she is a delight. Uh, well, certainly I, th I think uh, it did, you're right. I think, and we were talking about this before as well, but um, it's hard to, the, the success of this, and it was an enormous rating success, you know, it's, that's, uh, so much of that is due to her, her draw and her presence. Yes. Um, and, I mean, at what point did you realize that it was going to be as big a deal as it turned out to be? I mean, I, I think I remember at the time everyone thought, "Oh, well, that's nice. They're trying to do a musical again." But I don't. I don't. I think everyone, at least everyone that I knew, was genuinely kind of gobsmacked at how popular it turned out to be. Yeah, I, I had no idea. I, I didn't know how people would take to it because it was the first one of these, you know. And it wasn't until the next day that I was like, I, "I'm sorry, how many million, millions of people watched it? It was like 23 <laughs> or something like that." I, I knew because I had like like a hundred thousand new followers on Twitter or something <laughs> like that. Um, it was crazy. Um, and people who were like, I didn't know what a musical was. I just love Carrie Underwood, and now <clears throat> and now I love musicals. So I think you know we have her to thank for that. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice thing. When were you following along? During the, I mean, you have a lot of time off stage in this uh, broadcast. Yes. I mean, were you? Were you, did you have your your feelers out for how it was going over at any point? Nah, <laughs> nah I, think, I think it's dangerous to like spend too much time on Twitter analyzing how people are experiencing something. You know, I was just enjoying it. I just stayed backstage and like watched the rest of it. Cause my character leaves, you know, halfway through act two. Um, so I tweeted one thing. I think I wrote like Elsa out or something like that. And then I just watched the rest. <laughs> Um, and enjoyed myself. Did you, uh, I mean, I, one of the things that I, I think will be striking to a lot of people who are very familiar with the movie but have not had a chance to see the play is how much of a different role Elsa has. I mean, she has these musical moments which she does not have in the film uh, yeah. with Max and, and other things. I mean, in many ways, you, one of the, one of the good things about your character and, and, uh, and, and Christians is that you get to be ambassadors for this material that people don't already know. Yeah, yes, exactly. In the in the movie, <clears throat> they didn't have those two songs, um, and they were really fun. They were really fun to do, and and hopefully like a surprise for people. And you, you know, Christian is hilarious, so it was a really fun thing to be able to do. I've wondered about that writer. I don't know if you have any opinion on this, but I've wondered about that screenplay choice about. Um, choosing to keep all the music within the family and not giving 
you know, uh, these two other characters, a well, musical I voice. I don't think she could sing, right? I think that's <laughs> the big part of it is that they really wanted her to be the Baroness, but she's not a singer. That may be uh, so. Yeah. yeah, that was my understanding. But I also think in a way it, it, it does separate them in a way that's good. You know, Maria is the one with the beautiful voice and who brings music back into the family. And, you know, she had like a long cigarette, you know, um, <laughs> but I'm I'm glad that I got to sing the song. And you had a long uh, there's a there's a funny moment in I mean, it's live television. There's a funny moment where someone is stepping on your gown for just a minute. My, <laughs> my heart stepped on my gown <laughs> and I shot you, the stank eye and then I kept going. You carried off very, very nicely. Yeah, That's what you, she would have done. You, you know, yeah. she would have been like, I'm going to have you killed and then keep going. So, you know. <laughs> Uh, here's a question it's, uh, that I asked the other two, and it's always something that I, I'm interested in. I, uh, you know, when you when you watch the finished product, are there moments in it? I, I'll, I'll just ask you to just so that people can follow along. Other than the moment I just named, mm -hmm. is there a moment in the picture where you think, "Yeah, that was a nice thing that I just did," the, like the, a particular moment you're, that you're kind of proud of as a as an actor? Yeah, there's a real there's a moment where she says where Carrie says she'll pray for me <laughs> that I have like <laughs> four acting beats in one <laughs> and it's it's become kind of a it's become a meme in a way that's really funny um so yeah I sort of I like take it in and then I realize what she said and then I have another beat and then and, and that at the time as I was doing it I was like well maybe this is going to be too much for tv but then when I watched it I was like no that was pretty good <laughs> um, the <clears throat> Uh, again, when we travel, it's easy now that we've had all these other, because it was such a success and it engendered all these other um, NBC live specials and now on other networks as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's easy to forget how relatively novel this thing was. They had done these musicals on TV, but they had recorded them like Annie or the musical. Yeah. They had done recorded uh, versions of them, but uh, but to do a live one in the old fashioned, like the really old fashioned yeah. 50s, 60s style, was yeah. kind of a new idea. When, when you were working with the directors, I mean, how much time did you have to to think out how that was going to, how that aspect, that live aspect was going to play on TV? You know, we rehearsed for about six weeks. And what's tricky about it is because it wasn't in front of a live audience. You sort of didn't have what you're used to as a theatrical performer, which is the response to the audience. But I actually think that's better because that, I think, can take a performance into too large of a space for a camera. So to have to sort of navigate, OK, this is a teleplay. We're doing this on television. Um, so it can't be like, you know, the energy for the back of the house. Um, but at the same time, it has to be slightly elevated because it is theater. Um, so getting that tone was was a trick. And I and I think we pulled it off. And, you know, um, no one is ever going to be completely satisfied by anything. And, you know, there <laughs> certainly were, you know, a lot of people who who had, you know, not great things to say about it. And, and it's always so funny to me in those moments. I'm like, OK, so you would rather not have you know, a kid in Alabama who doesn't know what a musical is, you'd rather them not get to experience the sound of music because it doesn't meet your like elite standards. I just think it's an interesting thing how people like to um, tear people down who are doing something really positive and lovely. Um, and we also had a lot of really beautiful response, which I'm excited about. And like I said, so many people saying like, you're my favorite actress now. Um, you know, it's, it was really, it was a beautiful experience and I'm proud to have been a part of this first one. And I do think it sort of created this new movement that, you know, I think is important. Yeah. I mean, as someone who, who live tweeted it the first time and, and said some snarky things about it, I, I, I look back on some of those tweets now and I think, oh gosh, you know, did I really need to? On the other hand, I, I, I mean, I'm in a particular position where I'm sort of, yeah. uh, there's a social acceptability to me being critical. It is, of course, is my that is my job. Yeah. But uh, but even so, I I I feel like uh, I hadn't quite taken into sufficient account how uh, how difficult and untested this particular thing was at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I always loved your performance. That was never, that was never, Obviously, uh, yeah, we got a but, monster. <laughs> that was never, that was never in question. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, so what would you, uh, when, and we're going to run this video uh, sort of as a run up to the group watch party tonight, as, um, as people watch it uh, for themselves and with a little guidance from us, what would you suggest that they especially look for as someone who was there? Um, it's not, so, you know, for me, I, I, what I am telling people to look for is the way that that Carrie's performance evolves over the course of the event. Yes. And by the time you get to, you know, her scene with Audra, she is really invested in it and responding very emotionally. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and for me, that's, that's very interesting to watch that progression. But I wonder if there are that or other things that, that struck you about the film. That's what I was going to say as well. You know, I think that we can't underestimate the power of nerves and, you know, I, I watched her progress over the course of our rehearsals. You know, she was given an acting coach about two or three weeks before we aired. And watching how she grew in that time with someone who was really invested in um, just, you know, helping her connect to the character, she worked so hard. And, I, and watching her sort of become more comfortable as the broadcast went on, um, it's a beautiful thing to watch, you know? I. I so I would say the same thing as you. Watch for that. Um, if it's interesting to know that I, right off stage was my dressing room and I had a, a bottle of whiskey in my shoe. If it helps you to know that, I did. <laughs> um, and, uh, but yeah, I just, you know, I would say like these are just a bunch of people who are trying to bring joy into people's lives and doing the best that they can. Some of them, more adept at theater, some of them more adept at television, some of them never having done either, and all coming together to try to like bring this beautiful story to life. So I would just say sort of to try and enjoy it with an open heart. Well, thank you. I think that's a beautiful way to end our little discussion, unless there's something that you want to add. No, thank you. <laughs> all right. uh, thank you so much for joining. I'm so happy to talk to you. Have a good night, and everybody Bye. out there, please enjoy the broadcast tonight of Sound of Music Live. Yes.